We've talked about the traditional ways of recording. We've talked about sampling. Now we go into a new venture. We're going to talk about smart tempo and how it will benefit you in your music productions. Let's first set it up. We're going to go into the project settings file, project settings, smart tempo. You can also hit the key command option P and that will also get you there. Click on the smart tempo icon and set this up so you are in adapt project tempo. Now do me a favor. When you do this, make sure this is a brand new session. And the only thing I want you to have instantiated is a piano. Two more things to set up right below this. Here where it says set new recordings to, I want you to turn on the algorithm. And then right below that set imported files to, I want you to turn that on as well. What these two features are going to allow you to do is to either A, record in a free form fashion with no click track, that's right, with no click track, and to be able to write music and edit and quantize effortlessly. I'm gonna show you an example in a second. The next thing that you can do is no matter what your BPM is, 120, 150, 90, 70, I can drag in any file with any BPM and those files will basically conform to the project tempo. So let's go through the examples. Right now I've got a piano set up and I'm going to turn the click track off. It's very important when you're utilizing this smart tempo and adapt mode to turn off the click. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit record and start playing my piano. And when I do this, you're gonna notice that Logic is going to do something very interesting. Here we go. Okay, so I have recorded a rubato or freeform performance and Logic has created a variable tempo map. What does this mean exactly? I'm gonna turn on the click track now so we can hear it for reference and let's play this back. So logic is adjusting to my inclinations, to my pushing, my pulling, and that's not it. If I double click on the performance itself and I resize the piano roll, we look at the performance and we see clearly that it is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So now if you would like, you can also not only humanize the performance, but you can quantize it so that it fits the grid of the variable tempo map. So I'm not sure if you caught that, but that is such a big deal in the world of production. All of a sudden, we can just start recording ideas in a freeform fashion. Now, a couple of things to notate. This will not work if the click track is on or if you have other regions in the track. Now, the reason this is happening is because Logic cannot implement Adapt Tempo if you are using anything with a tempo reference. So let's say I drag in this loop onto bar 29. Look what happens on the screen. The tempo lane turns to a blue color. Let me Command Z that. The orange line is indicative of when you can use Smart Tempo, in this case, Adapt Tempo, and so if you drag something in, this has a tempo reference, and so you won't be able to use it. So now that I have my performance, 
now that I have my variable tempo map, I can start to create a song around this idea. For example, I can pull in drummer and ask it to play percussion on my track, and it will basically line up to the variable tempo. Let me show you what I mean. I will line this up first, and let's start to populate the rest of the song and check this out. So we'll be talking a lot more about drummer later, but you really have to take this into consideration. I played something freeform, Logic adapted the tempo, and now I'm starting to add more to the track and everything is just going to line up automatically. Now, just a word to the wise, after you use adapt tempo, do me a big favor and go back to keep tempo. Keep tempo is the default set, so you always wanna make sure that you go back to the default set, just like we do with everything else, clearing up our screen. If we're using another tool, we always go back to the main tool, or if we zone in on certain regions, we always wanna go back to this macro view that I'm always talking about. So the last thing I wanna say here is that if you go into the loop browser and you drag in audio, MIDI, whatever it is, Logic is going to, again, adapt anything that you drag in to the smart tempo. Take a listen. Okay, so that's the first thing that I want you to do. In this next exercise, we have provided a session, so make sure you download it. And the layout here is going to be a little different. We were just working with Adapt Tempo, now we're going to work with Keep Tempo. So let me go ahead and open up this session. Let's make sure that we are all set up. Let's go back into the project settings, make sure Keep Tempo is selected. You can also make that same adjustment up here if you click on the LCD screen. Set imported file is on, and I also want you to hit the tick box here, which will basically create any silence around any audio samples, regions that have dead space in front of the actual sample. So the exercise is laid out here. I want you to basically start dragging in these samples, and there's two ways to do that, and you will notice that these samples, regardless of their BPM, are going to adjust and conform to the BPM of 111. That's because the current tempo of Logic is 111. We can switch this to anything and this exercise will work. So I am on bar zero and I wanna import something. The easy way is by hitting Shift Command I and that brings up this dialog window and then you just wanna find the file that you're looking for. So I'm gonna click on the file and I'm gonna hit open. Let's take a listen. Okay, originally this was recorded like this. So it was much faster, but because of the magic of smart tempo and specifically keep tempo, because we set up our imported files to on, this is just working in such a fluid fashion. Let's go to step number two. I'm gonna click drag this file and drag it in over to bar zero. Again, that's going to conform to Project Tempo. Let's take a listen. All right, step number three. This is a MIDI loop. So this is gonna work a little bit differently. Because it's a MIDI loop, it will contain MIDI information, but you can choose any instrument. So the way Logic operates when you drag in a MIDI loop, it's just going to pull up a stock piano. So we have this. Let's go ahead and select a synthesizer. We're going to go all the way down to Logic and let's select Alchemy. 
And I'm going to browse and just type in pluck and let's see if we can find something interesting. I don't like that one. Let's try this one. Let's try analog harpsichord. Step number four. Again, we drag in. Originally recorded at 90 beats per minute. Let's take a listen. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and repeat this. Command R. And the final step is a shaker. And this is a one shot. Now the difference between a one shot and an actual loop is loops are intended to essentially cycle over and over and over again. Whereas a one shot, it's just a crash symbol, one and done. It's something that plays one time and you don't necessarily have to play it again unless you want to repeat it back at the startup of another phrase. So let's take a listen to this project. <laughs> This is the future of music production. Enjoy Smart Tempo. Remember that because it is a project setting, this will be something that you have to set up time and time again because project settings are project specific. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.